Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode in my sketchbook series and in this one I'm going to be going through how I painted this sunset fields in watercolour. Before I get into that I want to say a massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and I'm going to be talking more about Skillshare in a couple of minutes but let's get into the video. <laughs> We're going to start off by painting the sky but before I go into that if you want to know any of the materials that I'm using for this tutorial they will all be listed in the description. Now this sky I wanted to be blue going into a yellowy orange colour so I'm going to be using the wet and wet technique for this to get that nice gradient and that nice transition between the different colours. So I wet the paper first with clean water and now I'm starting off by using the blue in the top half of the sky and I'm just tapping it onto that wet surface to get the look of clouds and I'm also adding in some darker blue just to add in more contrast and have more variety within the blues. You can also use a clean brush to just soften out any harsh edges and I'm finally going in and creating some little highlights using a clean damp brush as well to give more contrast to the top part of the sky. Now I'm working on the bottom part of the sky and I'm using the yellows and the oranges to get in this bottom half and I made sure to miss out the sun because I want that to stay the brightest so I'm trying to preserve that and keep that as white as possible so it really does look like a nice sunset and that the sun is really bright and glowing. I'm intensifying the bottom of the sky with some oranges and then I use a clean damp brush just to blend the orange higher into the blue. Now I decided that I wanted to darken the blue up quite a bit more so I first added a wash of blue all over that top half and I'm just going in with my clean damp brush and just pulling up some highlights to give the look of the fluffy clouds. And I'm just doing this throughout the whole of the sky. Starting off by working within the blue portion and then I'm moving further down and I'm adding some highlights throughout the yellow part and orange part of the sky. Now that we've finished with the first layer on the sky, I'm going to wait for that to dry and before we get on to the next step, let me talk about today's sponsor, Skillshare. So Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 different classes in areas like design, business, technology and lots more. With Skillshare's premium membership you can get unlimited access to all of the different classes on the site so that you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. There are lots of great watercolour classes on Skillshare as well so if you want to improve your watercolour skills even more then there are a lot of beginner classes on there where you can learn and build confidence with different watercolour techniques. And me personally, I've been really enjoying looking at the courses for investing and the stock market because that's something that I'm interested in. So there's so many different types of classes available to you. Skillshare is also really affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. But for the first 500 of you guys that sign up using the link at the top of the description, you'll get a two month free trial so that you can check it out, see how you get on, take some of the classes and then see if you want to carry on with the subscription. Thank you Skillshare once again for sponsoring today's video. Whilst we're waiting for the sky to dry we can work on the bottom portion of this painting which is going to be the fields and so I'm going to pre-wet the bottom part of the painting just with some clean water again and I'm going to go in with some really dark greens and just start to paint in a base layer for the meadow, for the field. And you can see that I'm pretty much just adding that everywhere but the area directly below the sun because when the sun is glowing on that part it's going to make it a slightly different colour and there's going to be more yellow to that area. So I'm missing that area out for now and I'm just building up some darker greens throughout the field. Now to do that area just below the sun I'm going in with brown and some yellows and I'm just painting in that area whilst the surface of the paper is still nice and wet. 
Also, if you want to give this painting a go yourself, I will leave a link to the reference in the description below so that you can check it out. And remember, if you do try this out, please tag me on Instagram at Kirsty's Art as I'd love to see what you guys create with these tutorials. So now I'm just darkening up the shadows even more and I even added in a bit of brown throughout the green as well just to add a bit of variety. And when I'm adding shadows directly under where that sun is, I'm using more of a brown colour as well. Next, to darken it up even more, I'm just going in with a bit of black and I just use that to create the silhouette of the house and I'm also using it to create a few details throughout the field. And when I'm creating details, I'm mainly just doing lines like grass. Now I don't want it all to be super dark so I'm using the same technique I did for the clouds where I'm going in with a clean damp brush and I'm just using this to pull up some of that wet paint to reveal these lighter blades of grass and crop by picking up that paint onto my brush. And I really love using this technique for creating highlights. But remember it only works whilst the watercolours are still wet. And you don't want your brush to be too wet when you're doing this otherwise you'll get those cauliflower effects. I'm also using this technique to add some little highlighted details just to that really bright area of the field as well. I'm also going in with the darker green and using that to add a few more blades of grass in the crops. Now once you've done that you can wait for that layer to dry and we can move back to the sky. And I was really happy with how the sky was looking, I just wanted to darken up and intensify the colours a bit more and make them a bit more vibrant. So I'm going in with some oranges first and I'm actually using a brush pen to do this but you can use whatever paintbrush you want. I don't know why I chose to use this specifically, I think I just wanted a change or it's what I just had like directly next to me at the time. But you can use a paintbrush if you want. And I'm just intensifying the yellows and the oranges and then I'm going to move up and work on intensifying the blues as well. I also wanted to define the shape of the sun a bit more as you can see. And like I said, I'm just going to add some darker blues to the top part of the sky. Now once you're happy with the sky, you can let it dry before going in and adding all of the details to the crops. And I'm going to start by the sun and I'm going to use a brown to do this because the, the, the colour of the sun is going to glow through the crops. And so they won't look green or black or as dark as the other ones. These ones right by the sun are going to look very nice and brown and they can have more of an orange colour to them as well. I'm also doing them very lightly and then adding some darker ones to add that variety to the crops as well. I wanted it to have more depth to it and so if I was to do them all the same colour it might have looked a bit too flat. I'm going in with the dark green and adding some details like bushes and some more of the crops and trees that you can see in the reference and you don't have to follow the reference exactly, you can be very creative with this if you want. In the reference though there are a couple of really big crops that go quite tall so I wanted to make sure that I got in them because I thought they were really interesting. And to do them I'm using greens and also brown a dark brown and then for the darkest areas I will use a bit of black. But I start off with the lightest colour which in this case was a green with a bit of water mixed in so it's nice and light just so that I can be happy with the placement of the crop before I go in and really darken it up. Next I wanted to go in and add some highlights throughout the field and so to do this I used the white watercolour mixed in with a bit of the green and a bit of the yellow to give it an off-white sort of colour so it wasn't just fake looking. And I just used this to, to paint in some crops within those fields and add some of the tall grass just to give it more detail and more of an interesting look and as you can see it looks a lot more interesting now. Like I said, I'm going in with a darker paint and I'm using this to darken up the crops now that I'm happy with the placement of them. And I'm just adding another one on the right hand side of the painting and I'm using this stippling effect to fill out that crop. I'm also going in with a bit of black just to darken it up a bit. So I kind of like the silhouette look in this painting. I'm doing the same thing with the other crop but you can keep it lighter if you want to. I'm finishing off this painting with a few splatters using a orange watercolour paint. 
And that is it for this painting. Once you've waited for it to dry, you can remove the tape if you've used it for a border. I really love using tape for borders. It gives it a really nice professional look to it. And I finished off by dating my sketchbook as always. But I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new or enjoyed giving it a go for yourself. If you do want to follow along with this painting in real time, then I have got this tutorial available over on my Patreon, as well as over 300 other real time tutorials for not only watercolour, but for colour pencil, charcoal and much more. For a small amount per month, you get instant access to all of those tutorials and they are all in real time with voiceover and I offer the references, sketch outlines and materials lists for all of them. Or if you just want to focus on one medium or one subject matter in particular, then I have just launched my website where I offer courses and Patreon tutorial bundles just focusing on one specific thing so that you can pay a one-off payment to get access to all of the content that suits your needs. So I'll leave a link to both my Patreon and my website in the description. But thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new around here. And even tick that bell icon so you do get notified on my future videos. But that is it from me and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.